pottery is not just a relaxing hobby. It's a peaceful way of life. Before I start my session, I like to begin my day with a little mindfulness and grounding. I like to think of it as centering myself before I center the clay. Wedging the clay gets my blood flowing and warms the clay up as well, so by the time I get to the wheel, we're both ready to throw. When I sit down at the wheel, I already have in my head what I'd like to throw that day. Sometimes my inspiration changes, and sometimes the clay seems to have a mind of its own, but I do find it's helpful to at least loosely imagine what it is I'm trying to throw. Centering further gets me centered and in touch with the clay because it's low consequence and can be done entirely at my own pace. Later in the process, the clay may get tired and slump if I go back and forth too much. During this part, the clay also begs to be muscled into, but really good centering only requires an even rhythm and careful leaning into the clay. Next is one of the most exciting parts of the process for me, pulling the wall. In a matter of minutes, I watch the piece sprout up to many times its original size. I love the feeling of the pot growing in my hands. I've been thinking about the proportions of this piece as I'm wedging out a certain amount of clay and opening up the clay to make a base of a certain size. But this is the stage where I really have to hone in on what my finished piece is going to look like. The clay asked me to slow down and pay attention to the details here, because if I don't, then I get no say what direction things are going later in the process. For example, I want to throw a taller bellied out form with a small foot and a small top, something reminiscent of a moon jar. The clay respectfully requests that I leave enough of it at the base to support the form and enough of it in the middle so that I can push out the walls and round the piece. The top doesn't want to be too thick but too thin and the shoulder of the piece won't have the integrity to support itself. If my mind is somewhere else for a minute or two, I may look down and realize I can no longer produce the shape I'd hope for given how I've distributed the clay. I mess up a lot and there's no harm done, it's just meditative to try to stay focused. Like Bob Ross said, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. There's something freeing about creating for the sake of the creative experience. I don't know where any piece is going to end up. Most of my pieces sit for a long time before being finished. Then they sit in various places, whether on display or in storage. I've sold more pieces than I can recall, but most never sell. That's not really the point. I do make some with the intention of using or giving as gifts, and I've made pieces on commission before, but oftentimes, many of the pieces I make to fit an ideal don't become that ideal piece for one reason or another, so I make many pieces before I'm satisfied with one for the purpose. Some might be frustrated by the unpredictable nature of the process, I certainly am on occasion, but I also find the nature of the pottery process to be the antidote to suffering from frustration. It provides a better way to process dissatisfaction, because it's so rewarding to keep trying and so enjoyable even when so many pieces don't turn out either in throwing, trimming, because they crack, drying, or in firings, because I knocked them off of a shelf and bumped into them, 
because the glaze didn't turn out how I hoped for. Or it did turn out, but it ran down the pot and fused the base of the pot to the shelf. Most of the time, I create for the immersive experience of wheel throwing. What a simple, yet elegant expression of gravity. Take a look around my studio and you'll see that it's a reflection of this process. Some might call it a mess. I call it art. I really enjoyed making this video for you all. If you enjoyed watching it and would like to see more videos with my commentary, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and let me know in the comment section below. I have an Etsy shop where you can find my artwork for sale. You can also follow me on other social platforms if you like those better. And I also have a Patreon if you'd like to help me pay for materials and film equipment. Making pottery is quite a special experience for me, and it's a pleasure to be able to share it with you. Thank you.